Hey guys, it's Dr. Price with Action Potential Mentoring and welcome to our step-by-step -step checklist on the best ways to improve your focus in medical school. So when you're going through this, make sure that you create your own checklist that you're going to follow every single day consistently. So number one, I want you to drink 32 ounces of water before you begin studying for the day. So your brain is going to reach its maximum level of fatigue very, very quickly if you're dehydrated. Every 1% of dehydration is a 3% decrease in your mental performance. So if you're talking about the USMLE, that could be the difference between six to nine points on your score. Every 60 to 90 minutes, you need to be drinking at least 16 more ounces of water, bare minimum. I like to think for every one hour, one glass. Number two, put your phone on do not disturb mode or airplane mode as well as grayscale mode. And so you can find grayscale mode under the accessibility settings, and it's going to decrease the dopamine release that your brain gets from all the bright flashing lights, the notifications, the different vibrant colors on your phone. Also, I want you to app restrict your social media or other time-wasting apps, whether that's YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is, I want you to restrict the time on it to no more than 20 minutes per app. Don't forget to notify your significant others or your family that you're not going to be available for a certain number of hours, of course. If you do, put it on do not disturb or airplane mode. Number three, I want you to clear off your desk or wherever you're sitting so that only the thing you're working on is what you're focusing on. So your laptop, your first aid, whether you're working on UWorld, whatever it is, I don't want anything else open at the same time. You shouldn't have all of your to-do list for cleaning your house or doing your dishes, that kind of stuff. That should be out of sight, out of mind. Your environment's going to play a massive role in your long-term success. And also uh, to leverage your environment, if you can sit by a window with natural light, do so. Number four, I want you to wear noise canceling headphones, especially if you're in public. And I really do recommend blue light blocking glasses as well. Helps me study for longer, decreases headache risk, as well as decreases your eye fatigue. So I prefer the Bose noise canceling QC 35s whenever I'm in deep work. I literally only wear these whenever I'm in deep work. For example, if I'm just getting through some tasks on my to-do list, I'm not going to put these on because I've conditioned my brain that the second I put these on, all I'm doing is deep work. If I'm just getting light tasks done around the house, or if I'm at a coffee shop, just going through my to-do list, replying to emails, stuff like that. I'll wear a different set of headphones that is not anchored to the act of doing deep work. If I'm out in public, such as a coffee shop, oftentimes I'll wear AirPods. That's one of my other go-tos. And for blue light blocking glasses, uh, I'll send you guys this link, but this is uh, my favorite brand. It's called Gunnar, and there's a couple different versions. Uh, I link the ones that I have below. Number five, if you have nasal strips, I want you to put them on. They're super, super powerful and very underrated. I put my favorite ones right here. Uh, I'll show you guys what they look like. And you can get these really cheap online. Um, I just buy them off of Amazon. They're called Breathe Right Nasal Strips. I don't have any kind of affiliation with them or anything, but I feel that they're really, really helpful. And what they do is they actually open up your airways, release more epithelial nitric oxide. It's going to vasodilate you and help your breathing. And so better oxygenation equals better focus. Number six, set a timer. This is called the Pomodoro technique. And so there's a couple different variations of it. My favorite is the action potential Pomodoro technique, of course. Uh, it's the one that I created, and it's the most effective way to study, in my opinion. So on your breaks, you want to make sure you get some sort of physical activity, such as stretching, going for a walk, ensuring you get direct sunlight, fresh air. Those are some of the basics. Um, on your break periods of the Pomodoro timing, uh, you can practice focused meditation. Now I go way into depth on our members area of all the different types of meditation techniques that I recommend for med students. Um, but this is super, super critical for improving your focus and decreasing anxiety. There are varying ways or different methods that you can use the time constraints of the Pomodoro technique, but this is how I experiment with it. So for the first few days, I try the classic 25 minutes of work, five minutes of relaxation break time. And so once you get used to that 25, five, 25, five, 25, five alternating intervals, I start expanding the 25. So then I'll start going to 30, 
then I'll expand it to 35 minutes, then I'll expand it to 45 until the five minute break stops being enough. So eventually, like for example, if you get to two hours, a five minute break doesn't really do it. It doesn't rejuvenate you. You don't feel like going back to studying after only five minutes. And so that's important to be in tune with your mental health while you're doing this because you need to know, is your break accomplishing the goal of giving you a break? And so keep expanding until you're at your tipping point and that's whenever you know that you need to increase the amount of time that your break interval is. So I go way more into depth on the members area um, in our onboarding videos where I talk about the action potential Pomodoro method, uh, but we'll save that for later. And then point D here is I want you to set a schedule. I want you to plan specific blocks of time for deep work and stick to it. If you say you're going to be in deep work for the next six hours, boom, six hours is locked in. Nothing is going to distract you. That's your schedule for the day. All right, point number seven, consume a 100 milligram burst of caffeine. And so it's really tempting to just pound a coffee, pound three or four espresso shots, get an energy drink, whatever it is that you like for your caffeine source, but you don't wanna take more than 80 to 100 milligrams at a time. So it's better to spread your caffeine intake out over the course of your study session rather than front loading it and slamming all of it. But keep in mind, you don't want to have any caffeine within eight hours of the time that you go to sleep due to the half-life of the caffeine itself. So don't slam it all at once. Spread it out over the first few hours. That way that it's in your system longer and it's not a super high peak and then super low troughs whenever you crash. And I'm really big on biohacking. I went over over 40 of the best biohacking tips uh, with my students about a month ago. And it was an hour long talk. We went through all the scientific literature on what's the best ways to improve your focus from a biohacking standpoint. Uh, but that's way beyond the scope of this session right here. Number eight, I want you to experiment with which time of day you maintain your focus the longest. So some people are night owls. Some people like to sleep until noon. Others like to be up bright and early. So experiment with what works best for you. Those are the first eight tips for improving your focus in med school. So now we're going to progress on to 10 bonus tips. So number one, I want you to measure the work that you plan to complete. So one of my favorite quotes is by Peter Drucker. It's what gets measured gets managed. And so I want you to literally write out exactly what you plan to do so that you can check it off as you go. And as you see here, I put little check boxes just so you can check it off like that. And so your brain will release dopamine with each subsequent task that you check off, and this is going to improve your mind state throughout your study process. Next, I want you to pick one BHAG per day. So it's a big, hairy goal. And so I want you to anchor all of your effort around completing your BHAG, and then the remainder of your day is essentially the icing on the cake of checking off smaller tasks. So we've talked about measuring the work that you want to complete, and then picking one BHAG and then crushing through that to anchor your day. Next bonus tip is chunk your work. And so the term for this and the high performance is batch processing. So I want you to group similar tasks together to minimize the mental overhead of shifting focus. This is gonna decrease your decision-making fatigue as well as task switching breaks in focus. Next tip is don't multitask. So the amount of tasks that you implement simultaneously, where you're going from A to B, laptop to phone, to iPad, to book, you're stretching yourself way too thin. The more times that you spread yourself thin, the lower the quality of your work that gets done. And so you may feel more productive, but you're certainly not because the quality of the work just gets worse. And at the end of the day, if we're trying to retain content for a long period of time, you're studying for step one, you're studying for step two, you have to have this content at a deep level and you have to have a high quality of retention. And so multitasking is going to fragment your learning. Next tip is wearing blinders. And I put a little picture of a horse here with eye blinders on. You guys maybe have seen it before, so you can only see what's straightforward. So I want you to have only one screen active and open on your screen, on your computer, nothing else. If you're going into a deep work session, I don't want you to have 50 tabs at the top because that's just an indication of all the mental tabs that are open in your brain as well as your anxiety levels because you feel that you have to go back. You forgot something. Now you got to check it again. And so if you have your Amazon cart open like I do right now since I showed you guys this breathe right strip, 
if you got your Amazon uh, card open, you're going to feel like you need to complete your order because it's a task that's not completed. And so that's the Zagernack effect. It's every task that's left uncompleted, it's going to be constantly running through your subconscious. So you want to create a list, have only one screen active and open at a time, and check everything off. Next tip is to say no. Say no to every single task that does not bring you happiness or progress your mission forward of becoming the best med student and doctor you can possibly be. For example, if you really, really don't give a crap about being the secretary of the med school photography club, then don't be guilted into taking that position. I see this all too common with my mentees. They get offered a position or a leadership opportunity or a philanthropy event, and they feel they have to go. If this is not going to push you forward towards reaching your goals or bring you happiness, then don't do it. Next tip is consistent but similar effort. Your focus will improve over time. You just have to follow a protocol such as this one so that your working conditions are similar. If you just randomly study with random working conditions at random times and random ways, you're not going to consistently improve. This is like expecting your basketball shot to get better, but every day you're practicing a different aspect, but never the same way twice. Imagine you practice your layups every single day, you're going to get better at layups. But if one day you practice layups, the next day three-point shots, the next day foul shots, your layups aren't going to be any better on day four because you only practiced it once. It's the same way with your study techniques. If you use the same study techniques, like the reverse pyramid protocol, for example, you're going to be so effective and efficient by the time that you get to your step one, your step two, whatever it is, You've used the best protocols over and over and over consistently, and so the results will show. And if you don't do this, you can still make some progress. It's just not going to be as consistent and measurable. Your mind likes consistency. Check. Next tip is to define your deep work philosophy. I want you to clearly articulate, and you can either write this down, you can say it to a friend or a loved one, but I want you to articulate what deep work means to you and why it's important to your goals. On top of this, I want you to actually define your goals. So identify the tasks or projects that you want to focus on during every deep work session. So this all kind of fits into the overarching philosophy you have. If you go into a deep work session with the mentality of, ah, I'm just going to study hard for a few hours, rather than attacking specific tasks, you will not reach the same level of performance. For me, I never went into a deep work session with kind of just the ambiguous, nebulous goal for the session itself. because if you have ambiguous goals, then who knows if you even hit it. You can't track it and improve, which you'll see is the last tip. Next is establish a shutdown routine. Create a routine to signal the end of the workday. This will keep you fresh. So every day before you get ready for bed, do the same routine. That way that your brain knows it's time to shut off and it's done working for the day. We have a whole entire presentation on the members area of over 40 or 50 of the best tips to improve your sleep efficiency to improve retention so um, definitely something to check out in the future and then last tip here is evaluate and adjust after each deep work session i want you to evaluate how well it went and make adjustments to your protocol as needed so this is the eight tips as well as the 10 bonus tips on how to improve your focus as a med student if you want some more help preparing for med school, boards, USMLE, Comlex, step one, step two, rotations, optimizing your CV, getting research, or basically any aspect of medical school, check out this link below. It's the same exact link that's in the bio of all my social media pages. Uh, you can feel free to book a free call with my team if you have any questions, if you'd like to learn more. Absolutely no pressure. Totally free. It's complimentary. And I'm looking forward to your success. And if you want more content regarding focus optimization for our members, we cover everything from the Action Potential Pomodoro, Med School Monk Mode, How to Study Like Darwin, Extreme Pareto's Law as a Med Student, the focus apps that I use, Productive Diversions and How to Track Distractions Effectively, as well as Habit Optimization, CNS Priming, and way more. We have over 130 hours of USMLE crash courses, tip videos like these, how to get research, how to kill your rotations, and that kind of stuff as well. So just to give you an idea here, if we go to mindset optimization and strategies for the focus and time management section, I mean, we have all these videos just specifically about focus and time management. And so, of course, everything else from test taking, goal setting, anxiety management, those are some of the mindset optimization techniques that we also cover. So 
Let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully this is helpful. Looking forward to next time. See you later, guys.